Thanks, Whitney. And also uh, Eric Buchanan from Mountain America is here in the corner, if you haven't met yet. So just uh, Whitney. And uh, uh, how's everybody doing today? Very well. I'm going to stand out of that, that big dark, uh, bright light. Uh, very excited to be back to Salt Lake Community College, be back to Salt Lake. A little bit of uh, background about myself. I've spoken here a few times already the last couple years. I am a uh, author of a book called Young Money. I'm a speaker. I'm the founder of a company called Young Money Media and Young Money University. I, here's what I do for a living. I help people, typically the millennial age group, it doesn't matter because I've spoken to many people who are baby boomers. It doesn't matter the age, but with my college speaking tour, I help people like you begin to think differently about money to begin to truly live a life that fits your dreams. Does that sound good to anybody? I'm going to basically take you on a tour of the five steps to financial success that is helping not hundreds, not thousands, but we're now talking about tens of thousands of people do money differently. In fact, my book called Young Money, uh, it's been out for a couple years, still making a big impact. Uh, I've got a new book coming out probably mid, mid next year. It's going to be called Do Money Differently. Uh, let me ask you a question. How many love your parents, but just want to do money differently than them? Anybody in that camp? I get it everywhere I go around the country, not because you are throwing your parents underneath the bus. That's not the case. We have many people who are taking this five-step plan and are taking it home and saying, hey, mom, dad, I'm going to teach you how to do money a little bit differently. I'm going to teach you how to save it, spend it, invest it, manage money differently. So. This is what today is going to look like. How many of you, so that you can kind of start the process of thinking differently about money? Who's driven uh, 75 miles an hour on 15, I-15 before? Okay, just using that number. Someone's like, uh, I've gone 95. I don't want to hear about your speeding, but here's the deal. At 75 miles an hour, would you agree that this is all you have to do on the steering, with the steering wheel to go from the center lane to the left lane? Just that tweak, right? At that speed, that's all you've got to do. But would you agree when you're going through a school zone of 20 miles an hour and you want to take a left on a street in a school zone, you've got to turn that steering wheel like that, right? At lower speeds. Going back to 75 miles an hour, what I'm going to do today is going to help you save, spend, manage, and invest money differently by simply tweaking how you think about it tweaking how you save money differently. It's a very powerful five-step plan that some of you are going to leave here today pretty darn fired up because this is the last thing I'm going to teach you is a traditional financial literacy plan or this is not this is definitely not a traditional financial literacy workshop. So who's ready to rock and roll? Anyone? Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, again, our tour is sponsored by Mountain America Credit Union, uh, who's based here in Salt Lake. Uh, anybody a member out of Curiosity? Okay, fantastic. Pretty decent amount. Uh, wonderful partnership. They uh, are doing a lot in the community to help you really do money differently as well and to help you reach your goals also. So here's some background, how this all got started. I grew up in uh, Dayton, Ohio, by the way. That's my background. Anybody been to Dayton, Ohio? Anybody heard of Dayton? Okay, you've been there. Live in Cincinnati now. Uh, when I was, uh, let's see, my oldest son is 23. When he was seven, uh, we moved. We have four children, but when he was seven, we moved to Orlando, Florida. And we since have moved back to Cincinnati three years ago. So just a little bit of background. Um, before I tell you about this magazine, Young Money, some more history of, of myself. When I was 16 years old, I was the youngest of seven. And in our home growing up, it was an unwritten rule to get a job. And so I kind of bucked that trend or rule and I started to knock on our neighbor's doors in Dayton, Ohio, and I started to cut grass, seeing if they wanted their lawn mowed. And I started to make a pretty decent amount of money in my first year. I made two grand my first summer cutting grass. Anybody cut grass? Anybody do something like that stuff growing up at Everett's currently? So what happened was my father said to me, hey, how much money did you make Cutting grass this past summer again. This was like mid-November, the grass cutting season, kind of like here is over. And I said, well, I made two grand. He said, where, where's the money? I said, it's in the bank. He thought I had spent it all. 
And he said, here's what you're going to do. On Monday, you're going to call my friend, Tom Lauferswiler, was his college buddy, and he was a stockbroker. And he said, what you're going to do now is you're going to take some of that money and invest it. You're going to buy 10 shares of Johnson & Johnson stock. And I'm like, uh, Dad, who are those guys? <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, no, that's a company called Johnson & Johnson. You've all heard of it, right? They make Tylenol, he said. They make Band-Aid brands, other drugs and pharmaceuticals and me medical equipment. And I'm like, okay, I got it. So I bought 10 shares of J&J &J stock on that Monday. It was trading at $43 per share. So what's 10 times 43? What was my investment? 430 bucks, right. And so I'm going, whoa, I am now an investor at age, just under the age of 16. I'm going, hmm, not bad, not bad. Sounded pretty cool. But I was a little nervous too. I'm going, I can't believe I've got money in stock and don't they go up and down and I'm all scared. Well, 60 days later, no joke, a very uh, evil person walks into a pharmacy in a suburb of Chicago, laces Tylenol caplets with cyanide. Some of you may have done some report on this. It's called the Tylenol scare. Five people lost their lives. Being almost 16, I didn't think much about the families that lost their loved ones, but what was I most interested in? My investment. Because what happened is my J&J stock went down to $28 per share overnight. And this was the look on my face when my dad got home. He came through the garage door all the time. This was my look on my face. He's like, what? I said, didn't you hear? He goes, well, yeah. He goes, well, my stock is down to 28. How do I get out of this dumb thing? I was probably other, you know, disrespectful with other words, I'm sure, like, hey, you know what? You work hard for your money. I sort of die. He then said with a smile, he said, Todd, this is a great time to what? Buy more. Buy more. At 16, this is what I did. Are you crazy? Not buy. Get me out of this. Regretfully, I did not buy more. Thankfully, I did not sell because seven and a half years later, I'm a senior at University of Dayton. I went home for the weekend, looked at my statement in the mail. There was no real email at the time. And I'm going, whoa, wait a minute. What's going on here? How do I have $1,800 in change? That's what my investment grew to. And so what happened during that time, I'm walk, driving back to campus going, man, I may not be the sharpest student here, but I thought I had the golden ticket of knowledge because what was happening now? My money was working for who? Me. I'm going, are you kidding me? And so I started interviewing my peers on campus. Do you own stock? No, no. I would go even to, at parties on the weekend. Do you own stock? No, no. I'm going, why? Why? What is up? My dad was not a banker. He wasn't a Wall Street guy. He wasn't an invest investor. He was a pediatrician. He helped little kids get well. He was a doctor. And most doctors don't manage money well. So that being said, that story led me to start that experience as I was investing more and more into individual stocks and mutual funds, which I'll share about in step four, led me to start this magazine. We had 7 million copies published from that time span. We had some pretty cool covers. Who recognizes this guy? Mark Cuban, owner of the Dallas Mavericks. Who watches Shark Tank in here? A pretty cool show, isn't it? Does anybody by chance want to start a business someday? Anybody got an entrepreneurial flair? Yeah? Cool. I, see, I, I hear see and see it more around the country. We got Danica Patrick on the cover. She looks like she just got back from prom. I mean, that's how young she looks, right? Back in the day, first, first uh, female uh, professional race car driver. So we had some great times with that, if you will, but we got out of the print business for a lot of obvious reasons. Then we started this tour called Young Money Live, speaking across the country now, 37 states. That's closer to 600 now and now overseas. Uh, we did have people tell us when we would show up on campus, we don't do this as much anymore with a tent, but from a distance we would have people go, is that the record label? Is that the Young Money record label coming on campus? Holy cow. Is that Lil Wayne, Nicki Minaj, or Drake? So we weren't, but as you can tell, people became very interested in what we were doing. So before I get into uh, these five steps for you, 
The question for you today is, will you be a financial survivor or a financial success? Can anybody tell me what are people doing? Maybe it's you. This is not a, a point of making you feel ashamed or guilty about anything you do with money. That's not the point here. Or do you know people like this that are more financial survivors? What, are they, what happens? What are they doing with money that kind of define them as a survivor financially? Yes, absolutely. So they're living paycheck to paycheck, um, going, okay, well, next week is going to be better, or next year I'll get more, and then I'll, yeah. So that's absolutely the case. Uh, what else? What else is going on with money behavior with people who are de more defined as a survivor? Yes, not planning for retirement. Yeah, just, ah, you know, I'll get there. I'm going to make, I'm making six feet. I'm going to make half a million in 10 years anyway, so I'll take care of it then, right? Or whatever thoughts we've got going. And so, yeah, or debt, debt. Yes, having debt, consumer debt, credit, uh, extensive credit card debt maybe, or whatever it might be. Sure, yeah, it's having more debt, than, and it becomes a little scary, right? Sure. So those are some things that define more of a financial survivor. I know you want to do this. You like, if you like my emojis today, you probably want to move over to here, right? Long term. You know, woohoo, let's go. Well, I'm going to teach you a real step plan of five of them that are how to dream, save, spend, invest, and give money differently to begin to truly live a life that fits your dreams. Again, like I said before, we're talking about tens of thousands of people around the country taking this plan and, and rocking and rolling with it. But here are some few more questions before I get into the five steps. I want to debunk some myths about those who are financially successful. Do you know that to be financially successful, that you don't have to worry about what the economy is doing today, or two years or five years from now, for you to be financially successful? Do you know that to be financially successful, it doesn't matter how well or how poorly your parents have managed money to date. It doesn't matter who's in the White House today, four years ago, four years from now, eight years, 12 years from now, to be financially successful. Hmm. And then this one is the kicker. I get everywhere around the country, I get some eyes going up like, oh, this sounds good. Keep telling me more. For you to be financially successful, to begin to live a life that fits your dreams, has nothing to do with how smart you are. Hmm, anyone like that last one? Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's true, I'm gonna teach you a system, how to get on a money system. Boom, boom, boom. No need to have this crazy IQ, no need to, I have to go to MIT, Harvard, or Yale. Nope, Salt Lake Community College, here you go. So let's, let's get after it. Make a decision to do, this is really, I need like uh, some like Maroon 5 music to kind of get started right now, right? You know, this is the point, part of where we can get some excitement. Make a decision to dream, step one. This step has nothing to do with money, but it is crucial and is not really discussed much with traditional financial education or traditional financial literacy, which those two words I'm not a big fan of at all. Would you rather come to a financial success workshop or a financial literacy workshop? Which one sounds more appealing to you? <laughs> success, because every human being is wired to be successful at something, right? You wanna be successful in this class. You wanna be successful on any, at any level of whatever skill you're trying to improve upon. Financial literacy means you're illiterate walking in the class, so that makes it more of a shame thing, like, okay, so we're gonna talk about financial success, but how to make a decision to dream all begins with knowing your personal why. You've got to get some gas in your engine first before I teach you how to save, spend, and invest it differently to create ridiculous wealth, which I'll share with you in step four. You've got to get a, as someone said recently, you need a why that makes you cry. Can somebody in here tell me why they ultimately want to be financially successful? To create a comfortable life for your kids that you did not have. That's a good why. That's a good why. What else? There's no right or wrong on a why. Anyone else have another why? Yes, sir. Love it. So you can help your mom stop working. Love it. Who else? Anything else? Percolating back there. Yes. I love it. We got a, We finally got somebody that I that I, I talk about that 
materialistic. We got, a, we got a material thing. Awesome. Thank you for saying that. He wants to buy a Tesla. That's part of his why. Some of you weren't going to raise your hand because, man, if I do raise my hand and say I want a nice house, or I'm going to look like a materialistic person because that person just said he wants to help his mom, so I'm not going to say that next, right? Love it, love it, and love it. Mo most of you in here, I'll guarantee if not all, probably want to affect the life of another person down the road, right? Wouldn't that be cool? Who would like to affect the life of another person and still have some stuff? Who would like to travel more? Anybody? Look at the hands fly up with that. To experience life, more experiential living is what I continue to hear a lot amongst your age group, really any age group anymore. Some of you could care less about a car or have a super nice house. You just want to do more travel. Well, that's what you're going to have to do in the next 14 days is because 14 days is kind of the number we're finding that any human being, will, it'll take some 24 hours to really drill down on what your why is. You got to drill down on a why. Why do I even want to be financially successful? The dreams that we have of an awesome Tesla, that's great, but I'll guarantee you that gentleman who said he wants a Tesla has some other things he wants to do too, and he'll drill down on that as well. So your why will be your ongoing fuel and motivation to keep you on this money plan, and you need to get one to get motivated. Finally, this is a big deal, overcome the fear of failure. You've got to overcome the fear of failure because we're human beings and somehow we've been told that to try something and then we fail at it, then we're considered a failure, right? Well, thank God that people didn't stop trying with things like smartphones or computers or whatever, right? Or building a Tesla. So the fear of failure has to get out of your brain. In other words, some of you in here, though, are choosing not to dream too big for your life because what if I don't reach that, then I'll be disappointed or I might be deemed a failure. Anybody have those thoughts percolate around once in a while? Uh-huh. So you're just kind of settling. You're like, okay, I'm just going to kind of just settle. I'm not going to dream too big. I don't want to get my hopes up too much. I don't want to be disappointed. I want you to throw that garbage out of your head and begin to start dreaming differently, like I said earlier. I'll show you how this all plays out, but the fear of failure needs to, to get out of your mindset. Because those who actually try something and don't make it are not failures. Those who never try have already failed immediately. Make sense? It's a big human uh, component that needs to be overcome, a big emo uh, mental component needs to be overcome. All right, we're going to now talk about real money stuff. Something you can do by, I don't have a watch on, but I always do that and I always look at my wrist anyway. It's kind of the old fashioned way with our phones, right? By five o'clock today, you could actually do this step. And if I left after this step, I would have armed you with enough to actually start going, wait a minute, I might be able to get some control of my money. That's how powerful these are. Step two, save money automatically. What do you think the key word in this step is? Automatically. automatically. Could you imagine if it just said save money up there? I'm going to teach you how to save money differently than probably 75, 80% of Americans. But if it only said save money, you'd be like, oh my gosh, this, why is this guy in here? He's telling me to save money? Really? Hello? I know, to, I, know I need to do that. I'm going to teach you a new way to save money. Automatically, you want to move money from your checking account to your savings account automatically each month. You want to start creating automation. You can choose the 15th of the month or the 25th of the month, whether it's with your bank or your credit union. You want to start automation. You don't want to, start, you don't want to save money in big chunks anymore for those who even save money. Who has a savings account? Okay, great. Who has a checking account? Okay. If you don't have a checking account, by the way, you need one ASAP. That means as soon as possible to do this five-step plan. By the way, you should never spend a dime for a checking account monthly fee. If you think that that is a cost of doing business, it is not. You politely go into your current financial institution, ask them for a checking account that has no fee. If they say, I'm sorry, we don't have one, or it requires a, this kind of minimum to have in your account, you need to move on to the next place. Can I be any more clear? I have saved lots of thousands of dollars from students afterward that have said, 
thank you, I was paying $10 a month with XYZ Bank, and now I'm not. So that's one thing. Here's the second part of this, which gets really fun. You're going to start creating multiple named accounts, savings accounts, called digital envelopes. At Mountain America Credit Union, for example, they're called sub-accounts, where you put nicknames to each one of your savings accounts. You're going to move away from a single saving account mentality. Because if you stay on this single savings account mentality where you have just an account called savings, you and I both know, because this is your bank or credit union today, right? Your phone is your bank or credit union. Would you agree for the most part? You rarely go into a branch. And so now, how many of you have ever done this? Hey, look, I've got whatever your cushion is that you think is a big cushion, say $300 or $800 or $1,000 or $2,000. How many of you know it's super simple to just take that money and spend it out of your savings? Yeah, big time, because you have a nice cushion in there. Oh, I'll work and I'll get some more in there. Well, good luck with that if you keep doing that for years and decades to come to have money frustration build up over time. Now you're going to learn a new way to save money for short-term wants, because who has short-term wants? We all do. Who has short-term needs that need to be taken care of? Food, clothing, we all do. This is what you're creating these accounts for, not to create wealth, not to save money to create wealth, but to deal, to get more control and to align your money with things that you have needs for and wants. So watch this, you can now create a savings account and you nickname it emergency fund. Because I don't know about anybody in here, but does life happen perfectly to anybody in here? Let's see, nope, no robots in here. Stuff comes out of the blue, right? Well, you've got an account now called emergency fund. You've got a few hundred bucks in there, 500 to 1,000 to deal with those, oh man, parking tickets, speeding tickets, whatever stuff happens. My son, when he was 17 in Orlando, had two speeding tickets over 500 bucks. Yeah, that was a life happens. Life happens, maybe a choice, but we'll, you know, I'm talking about, right? He's learned from that. Ladies, what if you, uh, what if you had a savings account called clothes and shoes? Who, who's up for that? Anybody? Any ladies in here? Yeah. Some guys are like, uh, I like clothes and shoes too. <laughs> you can have an account called clothes and shoes. 30 bucks a month going into that account automatically from your checking to that account every single month. Automation. For when that sale at your favorite place happens or whatever, you do get that temptation to spend money. You're like, oh, wait, no, I do have 180 bucks. I'm good. Amazon, whatever it is, right? I'll still Amazon Prime it. I'm good. Uh, yeah, but I've got the cash in that account. How about this one? This sounds so exciting, doesn't it? Car maintenance account. Oh, man, I can't wait to set that one up. Woo! Oh, really? Well, who's responsible for a car in here? Anybody? And do they, do they work perfectly? Nope. No. What if you're putting 40 bucks a month into your car repair account? Remember, it's called a savings account called car repair. And because when you turned 18, did life start to go slower or faster? Faster. Faster. And so... 15 months, 18 months, 24 months go by, you've got this 40 bucks in there because you know inevitably if you own a vehicle, you will need to repair it and you will need to maintain it. Instead of getting blindsided by something where you know is going to happen and you get that fun phone call from your mechanic that says, yeah, it'll be 890 bucks. And you're like, oh, or 2000, ouch. What if you had prepared ahead of time and you're putting 40 bucks a month into that account because 18 months later, when something does happen, this account called car maintenance, which you thought was a boring account, becomes your most sexy account ever. Would you agree? Oh, and a percent, you're like, oh, I've got, I got 900 bucks in there. Swipe, swipe it back over from your savings account into your checking account. Boom, within minutes, boom, there it is. And use your debit card if that's what you prefer or whatever. You can actually take cash if you want to your mechanic. Tell me about how that will feel for you down the road when you're saving money differently like that. You see where I'm going with this? So on and so forth. Who would like to have a savings account called travel? You're putting whatever you know over time, 40 bucks, maybe you move to 60, maybe 80 over time, into travel. 
Here's the point on step two. I think you're getting it because you're very engaged right now. The point on step two is you want to put a, a name to every single dollar of your income. You know your lifestyle and your life better than I do. Anyone else? You know where your fixed expenses are, your variable expenses are, things that you want to enjoy and, and have less stress about. You can do all of these as well. These are just examples. My wife has an account called Fun Money for when she wants to go out with her friends and do whatever. Just boom, there it is. How are we doing on step two? How are we doing so far on step one? Who cannot, who cannot do this plan so far? No hands. That's good. Step one, make a decision to dream. Create your why. Step two, save money automatically with digital envelopes of cash. And FYI, I'm not knocking any institution, but I get the question all the time afterward. Most traditional big banks, I'm not going to talk about their names, don't have this feature. Some might. Some might require you to have a pretty decent amount of minimum in each account. You don't need to do that. Places like Mountain America Credit Union and some other places can help you do this. All for this. Zero fees. Dollars. Zero. Nada. Any questions so far? How are we doing? Keep moving. This next step is super fast because it's relatively self-explanatory. Just say no sometimes. What do you think I'm talking about here? <laughs> Buying your kids new toys. Impulse spending. Yeah, just spending money on a whim, right? Because who, who likes to spend money here? Come on. It's probably a good 80%. There's always like the person who's like ultra saver that's like, oh, man, no, no don't, don't. He's not coming with us because he's too cheap. He's not even going to spend a dime. So we all know those people. There's, not, there's just a, both sides, right? There's nothing wrong with that. But when you say no sometimes to things that you think you need but really just want, it's going to help you move forward to begin to live that life that fits your dreams. Why? Because I'll guarantee you, your why in here, I, I don't hear it anywhere around the country. I don't hear many whys like this. Man, I can't wait to get two lake houses, uh, four Teslas. I want a mansion in Europe. I don't hear these crazy, crazy dreams. I just don't. I hear a lot of, you got one of them? Good. Oh, good. Then good. That's awesome. You keep dreaming those. What I hear initially a lot is, I just want to have less financial stress. I want to do money differently than my parents. I love them. I do want to travel. I do want to have this. Everyone's dreams are different. But I guarantee what I'm trying to say is no one's like, man, I can't wait to be able to go to Del Taco seven days a week or Zupas or Chick-fil-A seven days a week or I don't get much food and entertainment stuff that you spend money on every month. I don't get much like I can't wait to do that all the time. See where I'm going with that? Your why is much bigger. Your dreams are much bigger than food and entertainment. And those are two categories you're going to spend most of your time on saying no sometimes, by the way. Does that make sense? So you're going to create that realistic spending plan or budget by becoming aware of your monthly income and expenses. All that means is, is you're going to look at how much money you're making per month. If you're making $2,000 a month, I'm just using it as a number. You're going to look at, OK, what are my fixed expenses? If you have a mortgage, you live at home, have a mortgage or rent payment, car payment if you have a car payment, car insurance, cell phone bill. Like, okay, let's see how much do I have left over. Then your variable expenses, right? Grocery, eating out, entertainment, clothing is technically variable, right? And so then you go look at, okay, what do I have left? And that's where you start. It's going to take you about 90 days to match up your income and your expenses. You're going to create those digital savings accounts to match up every dollar with a name. Make sense? Get away from that single savings account mentality. What you, when you do this, when you create your realistic monthly spending plan or budget or what I like to call it in our uh, course in our book is your monthly cash flow plan. That sounds pretty fun, how your, fl how your cash flows, right, throughout the month. Reduce, you're going to help reduce the emotions surrounding money. Because how many of you in here within the last 12 months or within the last 12 weeks or within the last 12 days 
have spent money on something and regretted that purchase within 24 hours? Anybody been there? Yeah, decent amount of hands. This plan helps you reduce that emotion with money by assigning names to each dollars. Okay, here we go. This is the power step of all five. Invest money automatically. There are seat belts on your chairs that were put on before, so you might want to strap those on for this step. You, I had one person look down to see if there was a seat belt on. This affects all previous three steps. This affects your why. Those dreams that might be down here, hopefully over this next 10, 12 minutes, will start to surface higher. This will affect how you quickly you start saving money short term with whatever financial institution has that, those digital envelopes. It will affect how you spend money. Those new pair of jeans that you think you need ASAP, you're like, eh, you know, I'm good for another few months. Or whatever that you think you need might be kind of put on a pause for what you're going to see right here. By the way, what word's showing up again? Automatically. Automatically. Who wants to create wealth on autopilot? Autopilot wealth, anybody in for that? You absolutely can do this. Automatic monthly investing in solid stocks creates wealth over time and history has shown it. When I say the, the, the stock market or investing or stocks, what comes to mind to you? What kind of emotions come from you or adjectives come out of your thought? Yeah. Risk. Okay, great. Risky. Anybody agree with that? It sounds risky. Okay. What else when I say investing or stocks? What do you think of? Profits. We got it. We got somebody of the positive side of the coin there, right? Profit opportunity, yeah. Volatility, absolutely, because do stocks do this throughout time? You, you don't even have to, but you're not a finance major. How do you know that? Right? All that stuff that you think you have to be a finance major? No? Yeah, you know that. Stocks do this. They go up and down every day. But watch my hand. What has it done over 125 years? It's, it is only 700 points from an all-time high. It just moved over 26,000 earlier this morning. Here are some facts that you need to know before I get into the step four. This is the crazy step. The U.S. stock market's been around, like I said, for 125 years. There are trillions of dollars invested in the U.S. stock market by your parents through their employer retirement plans. Most faculty here at Salt Lake Community College have money in the stock market, so they own probably 100 different stocks in what's called a mutual fund or an exchange-traded fund. So if, your parent, if there's hundreds of millions of people, literally, Invest in the U.S. stock market, it can't be that scary, right? Number two, the only reason why the market could be scary is because people may, you have maybe known, or you, have gambled in the stock market and not invested in the stock market. That's the only way it's scary is when you choose to gamble versus invest. And so I'll tell you a little bit about that in step five. But the U.S. stock market is returned the average rate of return to investors over a century's worth of time, which is a lot of time, is running around 10.5% per year. Through all the world wars, through all the geopolitical events, through all the election cycles, through all the crazy real estate crashes and booms and all of that, right? The market still has returned to investors at 10.5%. Is there any credit union or bank paying 10.5% on their savings accounts today? No. It is much lower, right? So that being said, investing in stocks has never been easier and requires very little money to start. I told you about my investment in a Johnson & Johnson, right? I was an individual stock purchase, which I think you know. Do you put all your eggs in one basket or no? No. no. What if you by the way, when I was your age, when I was 20 or 22 or whoever's in that age range, I needed $1,000 to begin investing, to have a professional manage my money and invest in multiple stocks. $1,000. So 
that myth that's actually now I'm going to debunk or a fact that actually is no longer a fact anymore? Inve fill in the blank. Investing is only for the successful. Investing is also only for the, what else have you heard? Only for the rich, yes. Not anymore, ladies and gentlemen. All you need today is a penny to begin investing in 500 of the largest companies that you all know. I'm not going to go through all 500. It's called the S&P 500 Index Fund that basically covers companies like Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, Ford Motor Company, General Motors, Google, Apple, Microsoft, hmm, Halliburton, Caterpillar, IBM. Heard of any of these companies? Sure you have. You use their products and services pretty much on a daily or weekly basis. So are those companies going out of business anytime soon? No. Uh, Monster Beverage, you had a Monster Beverage drink. Do you think Monster Beverage, who knows who's heard of that company? When the energy drink market took off about 10, 12 years ago, right? Have you seen that? Monster, Monster was like, phew. Do you think Coca-Cola, who did, did not have an energy drink at that time, you think they were scared that, wait a minute, we're a beverage company and, whoa, they're taking off. Do you think they were scared of Monster Beverage's growth? No, they weren't. Why? Yeah, yeah, so they weren't scared because they could say, hey, wait, this is a real market, so let's maybe put one out ourselves. But if they get really strong and grow well, what does Coca-Cola have sitting in their bank? They have money. They have cash. They have a lot of it. So they likely could do what? Buy Monster Beverage. Because you know how many companies Coca-Cola has bought over the last 75 years? You have no clue. What their brands are, they have so many brands you don't even know Coca-Cola owns these brands. My point is this, the U.S. stock market is not scary if you invest in well-known companies like your parents are already doing in their retirement plans. Now you can do this with as little as a penny and begin to get on this train, the compound interest train. This is where it gets really crazy. And this is where I get very bold and very excited to share and why I do what I do because I'm going to teach you how to create wealth beyond your wildest imagination, but I cannot lead a horse to water and make it what? I cannot make you do this, but it's super simple. The game has changed. Why not jump on this train? As an example, we're going to start here. We're going to talk about saver A. Is anybody um, 25 in here? 24. That's uh, so an auction. 26. Going once, 23, 22. Okay, we got one. Hey, what's your, what's your name? Muhammad. Muhammad, nice to meet you. All right, Muhammad, let's just say, at age, you're here at age 22, so Muhammad Savere, in four years from now, he says, ah, finally, okay, I'll start investing. He invests $150 a month, that's $150 a month, or $1,800 a year, okay? Every month out of your checking account, Muhammad, $150 a month from your checking to your your, what was called your boring checking account, now it's no longer boring, into your investment account. Whether it's through uh, a mutual fund or an exchange traded fund, it's super simple to do it. So you do this every single year, Muhammad, $1,800. Your total contribution up until your age 65 was 72 grand. That's what you invested over that time. Muhammad, through the power of compound interest, we're using 12% rate of return here, which is just a, about a percent higher than, than the historical rate. But over the last 35 years, the S&P 500 stocks has actually returned 12%. So using that number, look what your 72 grand turns into. Can you read that? Yeah. $1,764,000 and change. Ooh, who'd like to be on Muhammad's wealth plan? Anybody? Who wants to follow that one? Big time. That's called the power of compound interest. Have you heard of compound interest before? That's what Albert Einstein called the eighth wonder of the world. Let's say Mountain America was paying, ten, Mountain America Credit was paying 10% next Monday. Big billboards around the city. 10% savings on, on our savings account. There would be a line from here to Las Vegas. Would you agree? So let me give you an example so that you understand compound interest big time before you leave, because this is how you create wealth. You can go after your dream job. I am all for it. 
go work for whoever you want, get, make the most money that way, or maybe you want to start a business, go for that. Huge behind entrepreneurship. Go for it. But just in case, remember, just in case you're trying, you're not failing, just in case things don't work out, have this plan going on in the background. So going back to that example, Mountain America says, yep, paying 10% on the savings accounts. You put $100 in, you walk away, 12 months later, you go back to the credit union, and what are they going to give you back? $110, right? 10% of 100 is 10 bucks. You decide, I don't need my money. I'm going to keep it in there at 10%, right? Who would not want to do that? Year two, you go back. You get $100 back for your deposit. You get $10 from year one, correct? Year two, you get another $10. Everybody follow? If you're not following, raise that hand. You start to walk out of Mountain America Credit Union. You're like, yeah, sweet. And they say, hey, we owe you some more money. You're like, what? Why do they owe you more money? Because they pay the interest on $110, not on that $100. Yes, the $10 per from year one, they owe you another dollar. Hmm. Year three, guess what? It turns into $133. Year four, $147. See where I'm going? It's not another dollar each year. It starts to compound. Are we starting to click here? Yes, you are. This is how you create wealth. Anybody 18 in here? What is your name? Madison. Madison, nice to meet you. Madison now is Saver B, Investor B. She decides to do what Muhammad did, but at age 18, 150 a month out of her boring checking account into her investment account each month. But she puts the brakes on at age 25, only invest till then, only 14,400, so five times less than Muhammad. She doesn't invest anything else, zero, till age 65. And she's got $2.2 million in change. What? Why do you have half a, thousand, half a million dollars more when you invested five times less? She got it. Boom. She simply started to invest earlier. You remember the part that I said earlier? The fact that you don't have to be super smart to be financially successful, right? And all you're like, whoo, that sounds good, yeah? The only reason why Madison, right? The only reason why Madison is technically smarter than Mohammed is because she's stinking op she opened the stinking account. Uh, it doesn't take much brains to open an investment account. Hmm. So who wants to be on Madison's plan now? Yeah. Well, what? I'm not 18 anymore. That's okay. You want to start any moment. And you can do this now with as little as a penny through a platform called Acorns. But I do, before I tell you about Acorns, who's heard of it? Anybody using it? Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. So here's the deal, though. I want to ask Madison one more question. Will you actually stop investing at age 26? Look how fast she's like, no. What do, what do you study here? What, is, what do you? Business. Okay, great. Have you taken a finance like crazy investment class yet? Look at that. She has not taken an investment class or a wealth creation class, but she just went, no, I'm not stopping. No, she's not going to stop. Well, guess what? At age 65, Madison, you have just under $8 million. Hmm. Whose why could start expanding now? Anybody's why in their life potential could start expanding? Let me answer the question in your head for some of you. Oh man, this sounds great, but I gotta wait till I'm 65? Anybody got that going on in their head? A couple of you? No, you don't have to wait. You can actually take some money out maybe in 10, 15 years for a nice down payment on a home. Or you can buy that Tesla that's coming out in 10 years that even it's sweeter than the one now. You can take some money out to do those things. Just less than $8 million? Are you kidding me? Hmm. Well, guess what? With Acorns, I mentioned that, it's a micro-investing platform that enables you to begin attaching your debit and or credit card to the app. When you go to, let's use Chick-fil-A, and you spend $7.50 on a meal, they will automatically round up your purchase to the next whole dollar. Hmm. They will invest your spare change, Roundup, 
into one of five investment portfolios managed by three of the largest investment firms in the country that likely already manage your parents' money at their work retirement plan and the faculty here. Three companies that do this. Vanguard, PIMCO, and BlackRock are managing your money for you. You will now own fractional shares of publicly traded companies like the ones I shared earlier. Microsoft, Google, Apple, Johnson & Johnson, Coca-Cola. Hmm. Huh. Anybody's uh, light bulb starting to flicker right now? Who's got a spare change of, in a jar going? Who's got that jar going at home? Doing what for you? Nothing. Would you rather get it on the compound interest train here? Hmm. With Acorns, not only do you, can you do roundups, but you can do recurring automatic monthly investing. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? Automatic monthly investing creates wealth over time. Yes, that is fantastic. Could you imagine having a jar of change at $623 Then you have to go to the grocery store and put it in that machine and that's not fun and it's not doing anything because that $623 in your jar could probably be earning that 10 to 12% over time. Do you see where I'm going? Compound interest makes everything an evil, uh, evil, even playing field. Even playing field. Hmm, I don't have to be smart, super smart. I don't have to go to Yale, Princeton, or Harvard. Let's see, my parents, well, actually, they manage money pretty well, so that's okay. I can try to do the same now with this. My parents didn't manage money that well, so that's not an excuse. I might not follow that footstep. I'm going to teach them now. Uh, the economy, no, it's not. Level playing field could care less, compound interest could care less where you grew up, how you grew up, what the economy is doing, how smart you are, it could care less. This train is open 24 hours a day. The station's open, it keeps going through. Who's gonna jump on? Who's gonna jump on? Any questions on step four, how are we doing? Two, two minutes left. That's always, I always do that to myself. That's all right, step five is simple as this. It's called pay yourself second. Pay yourself second. It's about including others in your financial success plan to begin to live a life of more purpose and meaning. Pay yourself second. You don't have to do this today. Maybe you start in a year, whatever you want to do. But wouldn't it be fun to have a savings account called giving, that digital envelope, and it builds up over time? Because do you think you might be able to affect the lives of others with this kind of, these kind of numbers? Oh, yeah. Because see, all of you are wired to do some pretty cool things. There's no question. And think about it. How fun would it be to affect the life of another? And unfortunately, money gets in the way, doesn't it? When something happens, whether it's in your family or friends, or you see something on TV, you're like, oh, man, that's, that life issue happened. That's really sad. Man, I'd love to be able to help that person. But I don't have any cash, right? Wouldn't it be fun now to go, wait a minute, my why... My why might be able to be expanded to make a difference in the lives of many people now. Because I was just taught how to create ridiculous wealth. And finally, I know you don't have $150 a month right now. Not many people do. Who cares? Your professor teacher mentioned she started with $5 a month. You can start with pennies now, right? Hmm. And when you get employed, because you want to get employed, right? Who wants to have a good job? Sure. You'll have something called a 401k plan at work where you're going to have your employer match whatever you put into your retirement account. 50 cents or a dollar per dollar. Hmm. Eventually, we're talking a few years at the most, you should be able to be at $150 a month. In fact, you could blow by $150 a month. You're going to get up to $450, $550. Guarantee you $150 is doable down the road short term. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been fantastic. I really enjoyed it, had fun. I will be here afterward to answer any specific questions. Uh, Eric in the back is from Mountain America Credit Union. If you have any questions about Mountain America to help you do this plan, anything related to your money. And uh, always appreciate coming here, Whitney. Great host, and uh, we will uh, we'll talk very soon.